Despite Maxwell Chikambutso launching his device for people to buy, many still don't believe him. There are those who do and those who don't, and I'd like to know which side you stand on. I want to give you some of the reasons why people still don't believe in Maxwell's inventions, and I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Let's dive into the skepticism surrounding his work. The first reason people doubt him has to do with the company he's collaborating with to build the car. If you visit their website, it's just a single page with no clickable links, no contact information, and no details about the specs of the vehicle or where to buy it. For a company that claims to have products on the market, this is somewhat fishy. However, it's possible they're not focused on their website and prefer direct communication with buyers. You can reach out to them via Instagram where the Scythe Group is active. Maybe they're working on a better website and we hope to see more information about the specs, pricing, and availability soon. But for now, the lack of transparency raises eyebrows. If you are in Zimbabwe, please let us know how we can buy this product. Another reason for skepticism is the supposed Chinese partners who manufacture the vehicle shells while Maxwell provides the microsonic device. If you've been following this story closely, you'll notice that no Chinese company has come forward to publicly back Maxwell or confirm their collaboration. Typically, when companies partner on such groundbreaking projects, they announce it to the world to build credibility and share in the benefits. The absence of this raises questions. It's possible the partners prefer to remain anonymous due to the sensitivity of the technology. If Maxwell's device truly works, it could disrupt economies relying on oil and challenge major EV battery manufacturers. This secrecy might be a strategic move, but it also fuels doubt. A third reason is the lack of independent verification. So far, the only videos demonstrating the device in action are those featuring Maxwell himself. We haven't seen any independent parties test the device and confirm that it works as claimed. We wish one of these vehicles could be given to MKBHD for a week or so. Once he comes out with his review, no one could doubt him. And if his reviews validate Maxwell's claims, then you know how it's gonna drive demand for the said vehicles. But maybe as of now, Maxwell only has a prototype and hasn't distributed it widely for testing. As more devices are sold to clients, we might see more evidence emerge. But until then, the absence of third-party validation leaves room for skepticism. The scientific community has also raised concerns about the feasibility of Maxwell's invention. Theoretically, it's impossible to harvest enough energy from radio waves to power a car reaching speeds of over 200 kilometers per hour. This contradicts the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. Maxwell's device appears to generate more energy than it takes in, which defies this fundamental principle. However, it's possible that Maxwell has found a way to work around this issue. Maxwell has not provided a clear explanation of how his technology circumvents this principle. Some speculate that his device might be tapping into an unknown or unconventional energy source, while others believe it could be a misinterpretation of how the energy is being harnessed. Perhaps there's more to physics than what's in our textbooks, and we should remain open to new discoveries. After all, science is constantly evolving and groundbreaking technologies often challenge existing knowledge. Another point of contention is how Maxwell's claims have shifted over time. In 2013, he initially stated that his device generated power from the air. Now he describes it as harnessing radio frequencies for energy production. This evolution in his story could be a red flag for some, suggesting inconsistency or even deception. On the other hand, it's possible that Maxwell didn't fully understand the physics behind his invention in 2013 and has since refined his explanation. What do you think? Is this a sign of a scammer or is it a natural progression as he learns more about his own technology? Ironically, Maxwell's claims come at a time when Zimbabwe is experiencing a severe electricity crisis with daily power outages exceeding 15 hours. This raises the question, why hasn't he deployed his technology to help his own country? If his device can generate free energy, why hasn't it been used to power homes, businesses, or even entire communities in Zimbabwe? Maybe it's possible that the technology wasn't ready for large-scale deployment until now. But if it's ready, why haven't we seen any testimonials from people using it to power their homes? The absence of real-world applications in his home country adds to the skepticism. Another reason for doubt is the secrecy surrounding how the device works. Maxwell has stated that he's afraid of his intellectual property being stolen, especially since he was denied a patent. This is understandable, 
but it also makes it difficult for people to trust his claims. If the technology is as revolutionary as he says, why not share more details to build credibility? Perhaps Maxwell believes that once the device goes public, anyone could replicate it, and he wants to ensure he gets credit first. While this is a valid concern, the lack of transparency only fuels skepticism. But we should give room for more discoveries and more technologies, even if we don't understand them. We shouldn't have standards that prevent people from doing things beyond those standards, provided the technology is not harmful to nature. Finally, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that science is still evolving. With electronic devices becoming more prevalent, who's to say that new energy sources won't be discovered? Maxwell's invention, if real, could be a glimpse into the future of energy. But until there's more evidence, the doubts will remain. What do you think? Is Maxwell Chikumbutso a visionary inventor or is his invention too good to be true? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. For the present time, we have the car, uh, which you can also use to power your house or your tools wherever you go to work. And the reason we put it in the glass, we, don't, we wanted you to see that. I saw that the, the, a lot of people, they say, they, they saw the panel, they, they, I'll get to that. You can see it's not connected to anything. The microscopic image is now on, it's analyzing, you see it's charging itself. So as you can see, the battery is now going up, you see? This device can last for 20 years. We are privileged that we are the first people to hear you destroy the microsoft energy device, both of the software and the hardware. Wow. That's how we are protecting the technology because we couldn't get a patent. On ways on how to protect the technology in the event that we lose it. For example, we go in a country, we will set up a power station, there is a hostile takeover, we are kicked. How do you protect our technology? That's why we took the trade, the trade secret route. Our patent is kept, our, our design is kept, the recipe is kept in three countries. And uh, the people who are keeping, they don't even know each other. The second thing, we try to protect the hardware side because if the engineer removes like a second board, you can trace, you can see that this is a rectifier, this is a, a microchip. So we put a small amount of a detonator to say, but that cannot harm anyone. But if you just try to temper with it, you blow it. That's part of the second board. Also on the software, if someone can have the source code, he can try to do reverse engineering. So we work on a on an algorithm that if you tamper with certain wires on the vehicle, you are going to destroy the microsonic device. So you cannot tamper with it? Yeah. So you can't tamper with it? You cannot tamper with it. If you tamper with it, then you lose your, your investment. Question, what would be the market price? Uh, right now we're still doing costing. I think before the end of this week we have the final costing, but it's going to be cheaper. That I will... Really, I can. Uh, so, what? Which products do you have on the market? The, the car. The, the, are the batteries on the market? The green up off grid machines are on the market. The TVs are on the market. The bikes are on the market. The cars as well. They are on the market. So, when you say on the market, where would where would one buy one? So, if you wanted to buy a battery, where would you go? Right now, we're doing. Uh, I think you saw the company that we partnered, like in Zimbabwe, which was uh, doing that video. That's our agile team marketing. But right now we are using the Tesla model, uh, the Tesla model, which we are using that we don't want to have middlemen because the price will be so high to the end users. So I say people they will buy straight from safe in other countries, then they will get their products there. For example, we are setting up in Switzerland, so it is going to cover Europe and some parts of Europe. Then we have got other countries that will pick up in the, like in Central Africa, East Africa and Northern Africa, which will cover different areas. So what's, what's the maximum speed for this and for? It's in an answer speed. It's one. Yeah. It's one. It's one. It's one. It's on. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there are no mechanical, there are no like, moving parts. <laughs> the only moving part that you will see on this car is a reduction gearbox. But you don't have to maintain it for the service. The generator doesn't have. Doesn't have. The generator doesn't have any moving parts. 
Okay. Usually those okay. type of devices that are known as a zero point end. So you cannot even maintain it, you cannot service it because there is no friction that is available. Wow. Mm. The way technology, the path through that, the, limit, the only less energy will go to recharge the battery, but the greater power of the energy powers the device. So that is the beauty of it now. If you understand what I'm saying, those people who understand like how batteries work. For example, in a car, in a typical car, the acid batteries, they've got a, your alternator has got a regulator. So when you're using a battery, that means the alternator is off. But when we are using, when, when a battery is depleted, for you to recharge and use it at once, it is very impossible. They don't have that technology yet, we have got it. That's the path through technology that you can now take power from it and recharge it at the same time. So the regulator now cuts off the power that has to be coming from the battery and it will be redirected direct to the car from the alternator. So this is what we have done. We have made it possible that a small battery can now do something that is big. Then uh, on the car, I think we're going to demonstrate all the cars that you know. If you go to Kaya right now, all their cars, you have to plug in either a DC charging station or an AC charging station. Our car is the first car. This is a generator. I think if you can go to the fridge, you can see. He is going to plug in and you will see that the fridge is going to be powered by a car. Like I said, you can buy a car. You don't need to have a generator at your home. You use your car. Okay. the channel. That's the car. Mm -hmm. So is the device? What we have done, like we said, the microsonic energy device is the invention that we have done and we are trying to protect it. We have embedded it in the vehicle. Okay. Yes. And it has got a self-destructive technology. On the 150 wires on this car, if you try to tamper with five of them, will be classified. You destroy the Microsoft Energy device, both of the software and the hardware. Wow. That's how we are protecting the technology because we couldn't get a patent. Oh. Oh. More like it. Yes, it's incredible. It's on. It's on right now. It's on. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there are no mechanics. No, like moving parts. <laughs> the only moving part that you will see on this car is a reduction gearbox. But you don't have to maintain it to no, save it. The generator doesn't have it. Doesn't have, the generator doesn't have any moving parts. Usually those type of devices that are known as zero point end. So you cannot even maintain it, you cannot service it because there is no friction that is available. Wow. Mm. The way 